How many push-ups can you do in one one round? Well, the most I ever done was probably uh, 141. Well, let me count these reps here. Zero, 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 zero. That is not a full push-up. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I am a professor of sport and exercise science at Lehman College of the Bronx, and I have a PhD in sports physiology, which is the science of taking good athletes and making them better by integrating their sport training, their weight training, their conditioning, and all other aspects of their preparation. I am also a competitive Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu grappler. I have a brown belt. And though I have been punched in the face numerous times, and slightly odd circumstances, I've never formally boxed. However, I will be taking a look at Mr. Floyd Mayweather's training. Floyd is, by some statistical calculations and inferences, the greatest boxer of all time. I don't think I would be debating that. This is a man who was born to fight and did it better than everyone. Does that mean his training is rock solid? In the boxing part, it's probably pretty good. In the weightlifting part, in the conditioning part, we shall see. And by the way, all love and respect here, no offense made, all just having some fun and trying to learn. And yes, Floyd Mayweather would beat me to death, probably just with one hand. So I take a knee to begin with. Ideally, I take new two knees, but uh, that would be a sex joke. And maybe not even a joke. What? Let's get to the video. The difference between me and any other fighter, they wake up early in the morning and they do their run and exert, them, exert themselves. So when it's time to go to the boxing gym, they don't have anything left. So what I do, I like to let my body. So this is how my day go. I wake up at 2.30. AM or PM? PM. There's almost certainly parting <laughs> too much. But we'll say it's not ideal. They've done a bunch of studies with circadian rhythms. Almost all of us would benefit from waking up kind of at the latest at 11 AM consistently. So if you wake up at 2.30 PM, you got to sort of slowly push that back. Next two days, try two. Next two days after that, try 1.30. Next two days after that, try 12.30, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until you get to maybe 11 a.m. But what is important, very important, more important than when you wake up, is that you get a full night's rest, that you're refreshed, and that without much further ado, as a professional athlete, after you wake up, you go and you hit the gym hard, training your most overloading, most difficult, most specific training that you care about which in Floyd's case is probably boxing. I'm not sure if he's going to say that's what he does, but that's what good sports science would say you do. And a sure shit is not waking up artificially early, f***ing up your sleep. Sometimes people get some of their best sleep between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. And they wake up at 5 to drink raw eggs and do Rocky Balboa things like run around. But in reality, you probably want much, maybe not all, but much of your conditioning from boxing to come from actual boxing drills, which means you're learning to box, getting better at boxing and getting conditioning at the same time. Versus if you're just doing road work running, there is a place for that in boxing training, but that place is a lot smaller than most other boxers think. Maybe Floyd's gonna get at that. Floyd, tell us the truth here, buddy. I have to be, I have to be to the boxing gym at three o'clock. We work from three, from three to six. I go get a meal, I rest a couple hours. Then I go out and do, I run between five to seven miles, five to eight miles. That's not a crazy amount. That's pretty good. So that's actually all pretty good advice. I think the best thing to take from that for Mr. Floyd Mayweather is that you want plenty of rest. You don't want to wake up artificially early in a way that screws up your sleep, doesn't give you a high enough duration of high quality sleep, and that you want to put your most important training, which mostly is going to be boxing training first because you're refreshed and ready. And uh, then later when you're already tired, you heal a little bit, rest a little bit, and then go and do your ancillary work. That is probably a really good way to think about things. And that's, I would say something that Floyd is doing very, very well. Has Floyd ever gotten physical with a girl? Is, is he the guy that got physical with his woman? <laughs> I Googled it and the first article is Floyd Mayweather's bio history of beating his girlfriends. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> Listen, I gotta be honest, man. Scott, the video guy, and I, we joke about everything. And that does not exclude spousal abuse. That being said, there's a difference between joking about some shit and doing some shit. Floyd Mayweather apparently beat up a whole lot of bitches, people that were his girlfriends, urban vernacular, over the years. And that means that every gram and ounce of respect I ever had for Floyd is 
shut out by the fact that he beats up women, which is the most pathetic thing you can do next to beating up a child or maybe an old person. So, yeah, lame. And I wouldn't say this to everyone because most people could beat me up, but uh, if I ever caught Floyd in the street and he mistook me for a woman, I'd be the last several punches he ever threw in his life. It's highly unlikely he's knocking me out. It's highly unlikely he's trained to stop single legs, which your boy is good at dishing out. As soon as I get Floyd on the ground, now I'm Floyd Mayweather, bitch. F*** up out of here, spouse abuse ass, bitch ass motherfucker. Seriously, that's lame as fuck. I'm not going to get social justice with it. I'll shut up, but like... You, be, you beating bitches, you a bitch, dog. Period. If I take a long period of time off, I would train two weeks of just shaking out and then eight weeks of training. So I'll say eight. That's really good advice. Uh, I like that he has the two weeks shaken out. This is good stuff from a professional athlete to hear for other people. People get into whatever they're doing, whatever fitness goal, New Year's, doesn't matter. And they want to hit the ground at 100. The thing is, your body's not ready for that shit. Your body at that point, you haven't trained for a while, is like a car you've kept in the garage for a while. I have a fleet of 268 Lamborghinis in my underground super garage, the butlers run. But when I wanna take them all out for a spin, I make sure that the butlers are always keeping up and keeping everything tuned. If I leave a Lambo in the garage for a year, like I'm not so sure all the oil levels and shit are all good. So I gotta take that car out and just drive it around real nice, check all the gauges, do all that stuff. Same idea for a human being. You haven't been fighting in a while, you haven't been training hard, two weeks of shaking it out. That means a slow ramp to see where your body's at. And then he says eight weeks of fight camp. That is a f-ing smart. A lot of people just zero to 60, even a fight camp. They start fight camp. They haven't done shit for f-ing weeks. They start fight camp and they go to hundred percent. All of a sudden their shoulders and the feel quite right. And then they have to cancel the fight six weeks later because they got a labrum tear, slow clap. 10 to eight weeks. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. That's a good enough time to get in shape. Guys, remember that once you've been in shape before, getting back into shape is profoundly easier it takes not nearly as much time as you would expect. Getting to boxing shape originally can take five years. Doing it again and again and again can take months, especially if the camp is very difficult. Eight to 10 weeks may be all you need. What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? The most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. How many push-ups can you do in one one round? Well, the most I ever done was probably uh, 141, but I just regular it's 100. Well, let me count these reps here. Zero, 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 zero. That is not a full push-up. I do believe that with his endurance, he can do a lot of push-ups, but is it 141? I don't know. Anyone who ever tells me that they've done more than 50 push-ups, I'm in increasingly more skeptical and higher the number goes after that because I haven't seen too many very fit, very jacked people actually get there and do the real push-ups with eccentric control, with a touch of the chest at the bottom and with a full lockout at the top, Dems is hard push-ups. Can people do more than a hundred? Yes, I believe they can. Is that much more rare than most people think? Yeah, f- yeah it is. So can Floyd do 141 push-ups? I honestly don't give a f- cause he's so good at boxing. It doesn't f- matter. How many push-ups he can do is the last thing I'm interested in. Can he do a lot? Yeah. Is it 141 with good technique? Yeah, it's almost certainly not. That's, 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 that's what I've done. It. Straight 100 straight. How many straight gay jokes do you think I'm make in one minute? I ain't never done 100 anything straight. I'll just shut up. More Floyd. I started doing 436 push-ups. 436. Oddly specific. He, is he on his knees or is he one leg? What the f- is going on there, Scott? What is What is all that? I think he's one-legging it, if I recall. My man. So 436, then 870, then 1,308 push-ups per day. Don't do that. That's probably just really unkind to your joints. I would say do less pushing up. If you want to be the best boxer you can be, I would say probably lift most of your weights in the five to 10 repetition range, a variety of all kinds of lifts, but definitely tons of close grip, incline and flat presses, which transfer best to boxing and do them ballistically, which means with a uh, 
as you th push the weight, you essentially throw the weight because you throw a punch. If you could do them in a Smith machine and actually release the weight and catch it on the way back down, that would be amazing. You only need a few sets a week, maybe twice a week. You do a sum total of six sets of five to 10 reps, relatively heavy in those kinds of lifts. And you're gonna be good to go on your physical fitness component for muscular size and strength. For muscular endurance, can you use push-ups to build it? Yes, and it's a fine alternative, but it's better if you can to do more boxing build your endurance for punching that way and your endurance for keeping your hands up that way. And that's the most specific form of endurance that also brings in the technical qualities and the tactical qualities that you need. Because I am way stronger than Floyd Mayweather would probably ever become, but he'd beat that ass if it was a boxing match because his endurance and his technical and tactical skills, endurance, he's got me by a bit, but I do live roll the jiu-jitsu so mine's not terrible on technical and tactical qualities that is knowing how to box, when to punch, when to back off, when to move, when to aggress, when to regress, that he is the master of the world at. That's what makes you good at boxing. Having fundamental strength isn't that hard. Having a good deal of endurance is a factor of boxing a lot. So do a lot of boxing because only boxing and boxing drills can give you technical and tactical ability, which is the two things by far most important to making you a boxer. Can you tell if someone's a boxer out in the street, street clothes? Probably not. Why? Because what they have is up here. That's what's most important. And only through high volumes of boxing and boxing drills can you do that. Basically, TLDR, I'm just telling you guys to train your sport more and do less lifting. Uh, the lifting should be good. It should be hard. But we just don't need to be doing 13 trillion push-ups in most cases. If you guys are liking this, the extended edition is available only to our members. Give a thought to clicking on the membership, subscribe if you like what you like. There's lots of other good stuff in there as well. Oh shit, we got the moonwalk, baby. Oh shit, he's walking all the way up there. Yo, hold up. Is he stomping on the air somehow? How the f does that work? We got a regular Marissa end out here. Showing off, baby. Shit. Look at that facial expression. He's the f up out of here. I'm chewing gum too. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Cool little gym trick. Really, he just did one pull up <laughs> with a slow concentric, slow eccentric. I think if you do like, can do eight good pull ups, this is a trick you can do in your own home right now. Floyd Mayweather is appealing to a specific demographic here, and so are his promotions people. It's people who love boxing but have no idea what physical fitness is all about and what's difficult and what's not. Most of them will see that and be like, damn, dude, this motherfucker moon, moon walking on the air up here. But it turns out what he did was actually not that hard in context. But the vast majority of boxing fans, which no big deal, that's not really a criticism, um, don't box or have any idea about physical fitness whatsoever. But that's not really different from any other sports. I mean, the average Formula One fan doesn't exactly drive a race car to work, so makes sense. And the result of growing up with a championship caliber family that trained him from birth. That's right. Beat these white people up. Am I allowed to say that? Hell yeah. F yeah. Apollo Creed all day, baby. Yeah, f yeah, it is. The fing Italian gloves off my face. But to start punching from childhood comes at a heavy price brittle hands. As a result, Mayweather was never a power puncher, but this perceived weakness gave rise to Mayweather's two other greatest strengths, his never-ending cardio and his sublime technique. That's way more important than power punching in thickly gloved boxing, for sure. Is there any truth that punching from a young age gave him brittle hands? Can you speak to that? Uh, highly unlikely. Um, uh, there is a way to do it. You mangle your hands so badly that they never fully recover, and then you have just a bunch of like bone problems. Uh, that's possible. Possible. It's not very likely. As a matter of fact, if you punch from a young age and you remotely took care of yourself, you actually should have a bone density in your hands and wrists that's really fing high and keeps you from getting hurt. Trust me, your first day at the fing boxing ring, your hands are going to hurt a lot more than anyone's been there a long time. So, yeah, there is a, a way through which you could. You know, people do dumb shit in their youth. Maybe he did that, but uh, uh, curious. I wonder, if Floyd must have said something about this, that that's the reason. As, or he just can't punch that hard. He does weigh, like, Scott, what does he weigh? Um, yeah, anywhere from 130 to like 155. Yeah, that's just, he smow. And uh, yeah, you don't have to punch anyone out. You can just keep going. Even out of camp, he'd hit the road for a casual five to 10 mile jog. Then there was the skipping. 
Double jumps, crisscrosses, heel taps, crossovers, you name it. Yeah, it's just press day bullshit. At speed, often with ankle weights, and sometimes without rounds. He'd just go 15 minutes flat out because he could. Yeah, you can jump rope 15 minutes in good shape, not a big deal. His actual boxing is 50 times more important than this. <sighs> the regular media, I do well say, I know why regular media does this, because it's to make Floyd relatable. So most people sitting on the couch watching boxing, it would be a profound, just wild wilderness through them to slog through intellectually to understand how hard boxing really is. Because typically, if you've ever been in a fight, about 30 seconds later, you're completely gassed out. These guys are in there for minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes, and minutes on end. Uh, 15 minutes of jump rope shit is impressive to a normal person, I will say that. It's ball on my face. <laughs> yeah. It's not this like press through a medicine ball with one arm lying down bullshit. It's shit range of motion, shit stability. Uh, this is exactly the kind of crack pottery we would expect from boxers eventually getting to it. It's total dog shit, random nonsense. Yeah, shit technique on crunches. Floyd, thank you. Dick for range of motion. Yeah, press days, uh, open workouts. A lot of times reveal a lot of dumb shittery, but that's what, kind of what the people are there for. Also like his Where's Waldo shoes and socks. Classy. He's like, I'm gonna get to the club. I'm gonna beat all these bitches up. <laughs> Is that my wife? Baga! Would you fight Floyd Mayweather? No, and I got offered that fight. Interesting. Our uh, friend of the channel. You know I had to put that. Yes, and <laughs> also woman exploiter, Andrew Tate. <laughs> he said he's he wouldn't take that fight uh, I wonder what rule set he was offered. I suppose it's boxing. Andrew Tate would have an unbelievable reach advantage, but uh, double the body weight or something like that. But um, I'm kidding, a lot more body weight and reach. So it'd be a curious fight. Let's see what Andrew says about it. He's retired and he's small and I'm a lot bigger than him. I wouldn't get knocked out, it'd be totally fine. Uh, agreed uh, with Andrew Tate here. Yeah, I think he's the best boxer of all time. Also agreed. I love his story. I love his confidence. I love how he self-hypnotizes. If you appreciate defense, he's the best he's ever been. I absolutely and utterly love Floyd Mayweather. I have very few heroes in the world and he's one of them. That's true. If you know technical boxing, Floyd is phenomenal to watch. If you don't know technical boxing, you're just like, well, Irish, and you're screaming at the TV and throwing chicken wings at it to see hey. a knockout. Sorry, Scott, the video guy. The Irish are slow people. They eventually know you're making fun of them. Irish people, I love you all. I'm totally kidding. But then again, Irish people take a fucking awesome joke. Um, yeah. Technical boxing fans, Floyd's the man to watch. Regular boxing fans, not even regular. Below average boxing fans who just want to see somebody here and come off, man. Uh, Floyd's fights would not be up your alley. Okay. Generally speaking, there's lots of good stuff in there. Good ode to fatigue management. Good ode to ramping up for a few weeks before you get in a crazy fight camp. A uh, couple nods to really good full range of motion lifting in there, though that was not all the case. And really good description of the fact that you should be boxing fresh and boxing more and limiting your endurance work. Agreed with all of that. The stuff I don't agree with is your entourage is too big. Not all those people are your friends. You got to get rid of at least half and they cost you a lot of money. And two, uh... People do time for the crime, and I don't like to perseverate on these things, but um, beating up people weaker than you in general sucks, and beating up women especially sucks, so that sucks. F*** you, Floyd Mayweather. You get a beats women out of 10. Go f*** yourself. You're the greatest fighter of all time, though. Hope you can sleep at night. See you guys next time. All right, that was fun. YouTube thinks the fun can continue if you click on this video right here. I'm not sure, but the YouTube algorithm knows things. See you guys next time.